Hello everybody, Jim here, coming to you uh, early evening here in uh, Tokyo, coming to you from my palatial uh, apartment, not really, uh, not an adjective you would use for my apartment, it's not palatial, it's, uh, it's comfy though, and that's good enough for me, uh, having some coffee actually, even though it's, it's like 6.30. In the evening, I'm actually sipping a little coffee. Didn't brew it myself. I actually got it from a vending machine. So some coffee in a can, um, but it does the trick. It is some Boss Cafe Ole. Delicious. Um, needed it. Kind of a long day today, and a pretty chilly, windy night outside. So warming myself up with a little bit of coffee. Not a lot, because I still have to have my dinner, and I don't want to be up all night on this caffeine. Uh, anyway, uh, tonight, uh, responding to yet another viewer submitted question, I actually had made some posts uh, requesting um, questions from the audience or inquiring myself if people had any questions. Um, and quite a few people did, and so I'm sort of getting through some of them. Uh, this question comes from a viewer here on YouTube called Only One Nights. And they asked what are some of uh, people's common misconceptions about Japan. Um, because I suppose there are a lot of people, you know, living outside Japan who would like to come. Especially now that, you know, travel has been suspended for so long. Um, they'd like to come. And, you know, a lot of them are going to be coming for their first time. And, you know, the culture shock... Uh, sometimes you know can be stronger for some people than others depending on like what their image of Japan is like and what some misconceptions are and I had to really think hard about this because I've been here for such a long time now like the better part of I don't know like 11 or 12 years I came in um, 2010 and uh, with the exception of uh, maybe about 10 months or so I went back to the States I've pretty much been in Japan all that time and specifically like in Tokyo and uh, for a little while living in Kanagawa. So I also have to preface this with that, which is living in Tokyo is very different from living in a more rural area of Japan. So I'll have to say that. So a lot of my experiences um, are, you know, in Tokyo, in the country's capital, the biggest city in the world, etc., etc. Um, that's going to be very different from, you know, I have friends who live in Sendai, and friends who uh, live up in Hokkaido and they live in you know more small towns rural areas they have to drive along mountain roads and things um, to get to where they're going it's a little scary sometimes especially in the winter so I'm told I haven't uh, had to do that myself thankfully um, but yeah so when I talk about like my experiences keep in mind I'm mostly talking about Tokyo which is different from other parts of Japan Japan is not a monolith people are different in different uh, parts of the country and also I I had to go because like what are other people's misconceptions about Japan well I don't know I don't like talk to everybody and ask them um, so I actually went and had to do a little research look at some YouTube videos of people talking about what surprised them about Japan or some things they got wrong or whatever so I have a few things here I can rattle off uh, in case you're wondering if you're someone listening to this uh, intending to come to Japan in the near future um, maybe you know keep some of this in mind especially you know depending on where in Japan you're gonna be um, but the first thing I'll start off with and this was something that I I thought as well when I first came here um, you know Japan uh, Japanese society has this reputation for being you know uh, the mo you know very uh, respectful like that's key that's like a key feature of the society here is the respect and the harmony and uh, people are always friendly and things like that and uh, I'll say that um, while that's true for the most part I, I found that that's true most places I go like most anywhere you go people are gonna be like generally friendly um, I guess there are some exceptions to that but in my experience like I've lived in Europe I've lived in Japan for a long time obviously I've been all around the United States um, and for the most part like 90 some odd percent of all the people I've ever encountered in my life have been cool. 
um, but there are those that are not. And so I think it hits some people a little harder when they they come to Japan and they encounter someone who's like really rude to them or um, sometimes just flat out mean or kind of just nasty. Um, usually because they're not so keen on like foreigners. It's one thing that uh, a lot of people don't you know quite grasp is that there is like a content not a big contingency but there is a some uh hint of like nationalism in japan and even like imperialism there are people that want to get rid of like you know the current government structure and just go back to the emperor uh ruling over everything which is like weird um but yeah there are you know people around who don't particularly care for foreigners they probably don't care for most people in general but um i think i've told this story before but when i started going to uh, school here um one of the the guys i met on orientation day um you know we had a discussion that he came to japan because he had always liked anime and video games japanese pop culture stuff so he just wanted to experience all this for himself and um, after that first semester, he left and he talked about how he lost so much respect for their culture and et cetera, et cetera, because of some um, experience he had where people were not particularly nice to him, where he couldn't go into, a, he was denied entry into a, a business, uh, I think a bar, which I've had that experience as well. I've been denied housing, like a lot of the apartments I applied for, you know, shut me down because I was a foreigner and they don't rent to foreigners. Um, he was upset that, uh, you know, people would keep their distance from him on the train and stuff like that. You know, get up and move away from him if he sat down or just leave a seat next to him empty. Um, and if I recall correctly, he was from Seattle. And it's my impression that that um, area of, like, the United States, like the Pacific uh, Northwest, is an especially, like, liberal, progressive part of the country. And I, th I think he wasn't ready for the fact that um you know japanese society in general uh can tend to be a lot more socially conservative it's not as like liberal of uh an environment as you might encounter in like seattle or 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 portland or um some ma major cities in california or the east coast maybe um it's it's not as uh socially liberal as a lot of those places um there are still people here that hang on to more like I guess you could say oh, like older world ideas maybe and maybe that comes from the fact that Japan is such a homogenous place and obviously I don't know maybe that has some sort of effect on how people see like if you only see you know so many you know foreigners in uh, your lifetime I don't know maybe that kind of colors your perception of them um, but yeah, he was one person that, you know, after a semester at school, he was gone. And there have been other people like that where they, you know, they've, they've come and they've sort of enjoyed their time doing touristy things, but they'll, they'll comment that, you know, they've had some sort of bad experience where someone said something or did something that to them seemed disrespectful. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. It, some people's image of Japan is colored by their affinity for Japanese pop culture, I think, and you lose sight of the fact that it's it's a country, it's a society, it's a culture, and, it, you know, not everybody is, uh, you know, um, maybe on the same wavelength as you when it comes to, like, how they treat other people. Um, again, like, I, I grew up in, like, the deep south. I'm from southern Louisiana. Very socially conservative part of the country. Very religiously conservative part of the country. Um, so I've already kind of encountered, like, behaviors like that before. So it wasn't really, like, a big deal to me. Also, when I first came to Japan, I had the opportunity to kind of, like, ease in to sort of, like, my perception and uh, how I fit into Japanese society because I came as part of the military. So I could go out and do, you know, what I wanted to out in the city and sort of like uh, get my experience and things like that. But then I could always retreat back to that Air Force base, which is like a little slice of America, I guess you could say. Um, so I was able to ease into it. But for some people, that culture shock comes hard when they, they face their reality that Japan, uh, Japanese society, again, I'm talking about Tokyo, but, you know, maybe you can apply this to other parts of the country. It's not exactly like what they've seen or read on you know tv or in movies or on the internet 
um, just keep in mind it's it's a real place with real people and real people are not always like the nicest most friendly respectful people and again the majority of people are like I, again 90 some odd percent of all the people I've ever encountered in my life were pretty cool um, but yeah that can kind of hurt some people's feelings it breaks their heart when it sort of shatters that um, that image they built up in their head of, of Japanese society before they got here and for some, some people take that a lot harder than other people but uh, we'll move on from that that's that's all I'll say is um, you know come to Japan with the um, you know the mindset that um, it, it's a place like any other place and you're gonna run into some assholes now and again and you might encounter some of the things that uh, you really loathe. You might encounter some racism or sexism or something to that effect or nationalism and stuff. It's a possibility. So don't tell yourself in your mind that that won't happen in Japan because they're a more enlightened society and things like that. No, it, 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 it can happen. So don't, don't set yourself up for disappointment like that. Um, something else uh the prevalence of like anime and manga in society i know like a lot of people myself included our introduction to japanese culture is japanese pop culture we grew up with uh, anime and manga and japanese video games and things and maybe there's the perception that like maybe everyone in japan watches anime everyone reads manga not really um like that it has its audience but generally like like adults who were like really into like uh, anime and manga are considered more on like the otaku side like most adults still have like watch occasionally some anime or read some manga or everything um but it's it it's not how do i phrase okay so for example like i'm a teacher um i teach kids and adults the kids have anime stuff all over them keychains t-shirts and whatever else a lot of um, Kimetsu no Yaiba, like Demon Slayer, the, the popular stuff right now, or uh, whatever else they like, you know, Pokemon and things like video game related stuff. They, they're really, really into that. Um, the adults I teach, uh, not, not so much. Um, discussions of anime rarely ever come up, even if it's like a conversational kind of class. That rarely comes up, especially as they get, as people get older, they don't really particularly care about anime, I don't think. Um, and then some of my fellow teachers, like uh, the, the Japanese uh, teachers, um, we chat sometimes, and again, something like, I'll remark about, man, you know, I'm seeing a lot of this particular anime or whatever, and they're like, yeah, my kids love that. Um, but they themselves, like, they, they see it because their kids see it. Like, when I was a kid, my parents knew what Dragon Ball Z was because I always had it on TV. I was watching it all the time, but it wasn't like my parents gave a shit. They didn't watch it. Um, and I think that's sort of how it is with, like, a lot of adults here, where anime is, like, a really prevalent pop culture thing, and it's a business. It makes a lot of money. Um, but I... Most of the adults that I know here in Japan don't really care so much about anime unless it's something that is like like big like um, oh uh, What is it those those like studio Ghibli movies or, or stuff like that where that's the kind of stuff that's made to appeal to like a broad audience It's almost like the Disney of Japan um, Where even grown-ups will watch it with their kids and things like that um, so if you come here and you're like a huge like anime manga enthusiast fan I mean there are places you can go to indulge that and meet other fans But if you're coming here to like work and live here Chances are like a lot of your co-workers probably won't have the love of anime that you do um, And I think part of that is just because it's so like present in Japan. It's such a um a thing where it's like it's on TV and there's advertisements and there's manga and it's on your phone and stuff like that and so it's so readily available that maybe as people get older they just get bored of it even my, uh, myself like I say I grew up watching anime reading manga and I can't I couldn't tell you the last anime that I watched or the last manga that I read it's been so long and I think a big part of that is just being in Japan being in Tokyo for so long and anime is just everywhere that it's kind of lost interest. It's it's not such an interesting like foreign thing anymore. It's not this new art form I'm being introduced to. It's something that's 
just ever present all around me all the time. And so I think maybe a lot of uh, Japanese adults feel kind of like the same way I do. It's like, oh yeah, anime, cool, whatever. Um, <laughs> which is unfortunately how I feel now. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind, is in that, uh, yes, Japan, the home of anime, but not everyone you meet, maybe not all of your friends, your coworkers are going to really be able to talk with you about anime on any meaningful level because they probably don't really watch it. They probably just see it in passing, but there you go. Um, something else uh, I, I uh, saw somebody mention was um, uh, lack of Wi-Fi in a lot of public places, which is true. I think there's like the perception of Japan as being like, you know, cutting edge of technology, futuristic, all that stuff. So there should be like Wi-Fi everywhere, right? Like, no. <laughs> Most, there's like, I think it's getting better. But, um, I mean, convenience stores and like restaurants will usually have uh, Wi-Fi available and some train stations as well. But generally speaking, like most of the places you go probably won't have free Wi-Fi available. Um, so in, especially if you come here just like, you know, as a tourist, maybe rent one of those mobile Wi-Fi devices so you can stay connected. But um, yeah, public Wi-Fi is not so prevalent, even in Tokyo. Like I said, I think it's getting better. Like it's in more places, but it's, it, if you're just out exploring some random places, whatever, you're not really going to find a whole lot of free Wi-Fi unless you sit down in a restaurant or go visit a convenience store. And uh, kind of going along with that is um, acceptance of credit cards. Again, this is something that's getting better, um, but apparently people are quite surprised when they find that there are still a lot of businesses, even in Tokyo, again, um, that they only accept cash. Um, which is kind of odd. I mean, it depends on where you go. Um, a lot of people were surprised. I went to a, a game shop called Friends, and it was a cash-only place. They don't keep card readers and stuff. And I think a place like, like um, for example, Super Potato will take all kinds of credit cards, and I think they just learned their lesson because so many tourists went in there that it really behooved them to um, you know, s set up a system in there where they could accept all the foreign credit cards, visas, and MasterCards and stuff. Because um, not all of that is accepted everywhere in Japan. Um, luckily, like ATMs, especially 7-Eleven. Uh, the 7-Eleven ATMs, um, because I have a couple of different cards. Like I have a Japanese bank card, I have an American bank card. And um, most, like the ATMs, not all of them will accept all the different uh, kinds of American bank cards. But 7-Eleven uh, will. Their, uh, their ATMs are really great about that, where you can use... Uh, American bank cards, like if you have like a MasterCard, like a debit card, stuff like that, you can take uh, cash out. Um, so yeah, if you're going to be coming, hanging around in Tokyo, other parts of Japan, just just in case, have some cash on you, because um, yeah, there are still places that uh, don't accept all kinds of credit cards, um, or if they accept credit cards at all. And yeah, just keep the Wi-Fi thing in mind. Um, another thing I saw is um, sort of. Uh, kind of like this idea that I, I think some people um, might have the idea in their head that like all of Japan is like Tokyo and it's not. There are lots of rural areas in Japan where they don't see a whole lot of, um, especially like for, like tourist traffic, they don't see a lot of foreigners. Usually the only people they do see are people that are there like as part of the jet program or something they're like you know teach english or something and like that's kind of like their exposure um to uh you know foreign people um so yeah not all of japan is like tokyo or the major cities like kyoto and osaka they're wide swaths of japan um that are very very different culturally and um i guess uh in in, di in terms of their exposure to uh you know foreign individuals and uh, going along with that too, sort of the idea that um, not everything, but like a lot of stuff in Japan is like cute or it's it's kind of like has like that Japanese like weirdness, like quirkiness that you see in like a lot of Japanese entertainment. And uh, again, that's media, that's entertainment. Um, that's not necessarily like indicative of all of Japan. Like when you go into like central Tokyo, like if you go to Akihabara, and you see like maids and anime stuff and cutesy things and everything. That's because that part of the city is kind of built for that. 
and when you go to Shinjuku or you go to Shibuya and you're impressed by like just the sheer magnitude of just like stuff just like skyscrapers and advertisements and that weird like 3d billboard thing with the giant cat and all that kind of, like those areas are tailor-made for that because they're like big commercial districts so you're gonna see maybe some stuff that you might think of as being especially Japanese but when you're outside of those places it gets much more um, more I should say much less like uh, exciting and less like what maybe you imagine when you think about oh Tokyo I think when people think of Tokyo they think of like those three places specifically and then there's all this other stuff on the outside of that that is very um, uniform, I guess you would say. V very kind of humdrum. I mean, I like my neighborhood. It's it's awesome. Um, it's it's clean and quiet and peaceful. It's a 10-minute train ride away from Shinjuku. But at the same time, it's not this like, you know, you wouldn't, like, if you looked at a picture of Shinjuku and then you looked at a picture of, like, my street, you might not even assume they're in the same city even though it's only a 10 minute train ride away um, because all of that sort of excess kind of like fades away it all disappears and it just becomes just a, a neighborhood and a lot of Japan a lot of Tokyo and surrounding areas is like that where they're just neighborhoods um, not particularly cute or weird nothing's gonna knock your socks off um, they're nice they're clean and well taken care of and they've got lots of you know cool little businesses little restaurants and, and and salons and dental clinics I have so many dental clinics like right around my apartment um, but yeah sort of the idea that um, you know uh, I'm gonna go to Japan and everything's gonna be like this certain way uh, it's not you're gonna have all your fun sort of in central Tokyo and then when you go outside of that you're gonna be like oh this is quaint <laughs> it's it's uh maybe that's a good word for it it's more quaint than you might expect um something else kind of cool that came up or cool but kind of interesting is the the idea that uh japanese food is healthy um people think that like when i go to japan i'm gonna eat japanese food it's gonna be very healthy especially if you're coming here to live you're like oh i'm gonna you know get you know better health and all that um not particularly <laughs> i mean so there, there are some traditional Japanese foods that are quite healthy. You could say that sushi is really healthy, like as long as it's clean, as long as there's like no worms in there or anything, which is very rare, by the way. Um, but like, yeah, that's quite healthy. You know, like a, um, a diet consisting of like rice, fish, lean meats, miso soup, vegetables, that kind of stuff. Um, green tea, yeah, all that stuff is like really good for you. But at the same time, keep in mind, there's like, um, my favorite is to go to like yakiniku which is just like a whole lot of grilled meat and usually a lot of beer goes along with it but you're eating just like a like a just a ton of like beef and pork and stuff um or other like japanese foods like takoyaki which are just like bits of squid inside fried dough balls covered with like um like sauce and other kinds of things like not super healthy or uh, okonomiyaki just like a whole lot of stuff inside of like a giant fried pancake thing anything yaki you're just gonna have grilled and fried stuff I put into you um anything like tempura or um tonkatsu stuff like that all fried um not particularly healthy and those are all you know still enjoyable japanese foods but not the healthiest thing in the world and then of course i mean any corner you go around there's a mcdonald's or there's like a wendy's or there's uh well there's not quite as many wendy's but there's like mcdonald's everywhere there's fast food i'll put it that way anywhere you go there's fast food not all like kind of like sort of fast food chains in Japan are like the same like there's Koko Ichiban which is like a curry kind of fast food place so you get your rice and your curry and everything um, that's very different obviously from like a McDonald's or something um, but there are lots and lots of unhealthy food um, options uh, in Japan even though you know most people have them in moderation I guess because the obesity rate in Japan is very low um, but still if you're under the impression that uh, you know I'm gonna go to Japan and then I'll have access to just like this you know very healthy Japanese diet and that'll be good for me and all the temptations of the of the fried and the cheese and the the fat and the salt those will all be now they are still prevalent here um, I'm, I'm, I'm turning into a bit of a doughboy myself um, even though if I wanted to I could eat white rice and fish and miso soup every day 
It's not that it's not that easy. Sometimes you just desperately need that cheeseburger, don't you? Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Not all Japanese food is healthy, and not all food in Japan is Japanese. Hence, it's also not always all that healthy. There's still double cheeseburgers hiding around every corner. Um, last but not least, um, and this is something, it, it varies depending on where you are, but there is sort of a prevalent belief that Japan, and Tokyo in particular, is a very expensive place. And it's that's not necessarily true. Um, if you're coming as a tourist, obviously it, it depends on like, well, what kind of hotel do you stay in? What city are you staying in? And what kind of activities do you want to partake of? Um, yeah, it can vary, you know, how expensive things are. But as of right now, again, as someone who, um, I have my day job and then I have my earnings from YouTube and Patreon and selling stuff online, um, all that stuff comes in dollars. Um, it all goes into my U.S. account. And the exchange rate right now is, is pretty good. Um, it's like you're basically, if you, um, bring dollars over into yen, you're, making like it's like a 13 percent increase or something so the exchange rate is pretty good if you're talking dollars and it's even better if you're talking pounds and euros i think um so exchange rate is, is quite nice for the time being anyway and as far as expensive um I'm, you can find lots of inexpensive foods here especially like if you're on the move like me like when i go to work a lot of what i eat is stuff i grab at the uh, convenience stores so i eat like uh, rice balls I eat uh, the pre-prepared sandwiches they have, uh, things like that, and that stuff is like a, a dollar or two dollars or something, very inexpensive, but even like at a lot of restaurants, um, it's, especially depending on what you like to eat, you can get like really good deals on like a whole meal and you can have it for like, I don't know, eight bucks or something, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty okay, I guess, when you factor in that exchange rate, and as far as like living goes, um, uh, like Tokyo yeah um, um, real estate uh, space is is limited so it can get kind of expensive but the further you move away from central Tokyo the more affordable it gets actually so like if you wanted to live in like I don't know around Shinjuku or Shibuya or Akiba somewhere like that yeah maybe like a, a smallish apartment is gonna be like 12 1300 bucks a month Whereas if you're living in uh, West Tokyo, you don't mind like commuting to get to places, that same apartment can be like 700, 800 a month. Uh, my current apartment, uh, for example, well, I guess I won't talk about how much I spent on my apartment, but it's, I'd be paying a lot more for it if I wasn't in Ogikubo. Again, Ogikubo is like 10 minutes on the train west of Tokyo. It's away from all that hustle and bustle. It's more of a suburban area. It's not some, you know, busy commercial district where everyone's dying to, to get in, I guess, especially all the, the rich corporate types. So the the rents are not quite as high. And I moved to this current apartment from a smaller apartment that was also in Okikubo. And again, that same apartment I was living in, and it was like 700 bucks a month. If that same apartment, if I was living more into central Tokyo, it would have been like over a thousand bucks a month. So just keep that in mind. Like if you actually want to come here on a visa, especially if you're coming as a student or you're coming to work, you know, especially if you're going to be living in Tokyo, when you start looking for apartments, keep that in mind. Um, if you want to pay less, just, you know, look at stuff that's west of central Tokyo. I think I have a, fr a friend now living in either Tachikawa or Hachioji, which those are pretty far west like it's about 45 minutes to get to Shinjuku from there um but they're living in like a two-bedroom apartment it's like 700 bucks a month or something it's not so bad um so and then it's even trust me I have friends that live in uh, other parts of Japan that are much more rural and what I'm paying for my apartment they're paying like half as much <laughs> for the exact same thing just because it's it's not Tokyo um, but yeah, it, living in Japan does not have to be a terribly expensive experience. And again, keep in mind, I'm coming at this from the point of view of someone who's lived in Tokyo uh, almost the entirety of the time I've been here. Um, so I have, it's, it's all very relative. Uh, your experiences change depending on what part of the country you go to. Um, but yeah, those are some, uh, things, I guess, uh, some, some misconceptions possibly. Just to recap, 
Um, yeah, not everyone is um, as ideally respectful and friendly as you as you might want them to be, but that's kind of prevalent all over the world. Um, not everyone is going to be able to speak to you really in depth about like anime or manga. Um, a lot of people just sort of, it's just kind of a thing, it's like background noise for Japanese life, I guess. Um, not wi they don't have Wi-Fi everywhere publicly. Certain credit cards maybe will not be accepted, so just keep that in mind. Keep some cash on you. Um, don't expect everything to be like Central Tokyo. Don't expect to see like weirdness and cuteness all over the place. Expect mo a little more uniformity and a little more, um, I don't know, a little more reservedness as you get outside of Central Tokyo. Not all of the food is healthy. Um, some of it is, not all of it is. It's kind of still comes down to a, a bit of personal responsibility. And um, while certain things and certain parts of Japan can be expensive, um, it's it's probably not as expensive as you think it will be, especially if you plan to come as a student or on a work visa. Um, there are like cheaper options as far as like living and, and eating and uh, you know things like that. So don't be too terribly concerned about it being. Um, you know, expensive compared to wherever it is you're coming from. Um, but those are just some thoughts I had. I think this probably went on for way too long. Sorry. Again, drinking coffee. Can't shut my mouth. In fact, let me... I neglected my coffee, damn it. Um, thank you, uh, Only One Nights, uh, for the question. I want. I think uh, maybe this answer was a little lengthier than maybe you had, a, you had bargained for. Um, anyway... Um, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, thanks a lot. You actually listened to all this. Just me rambling on constantly. Um, but that's it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed listening. And uh, if you have any questions that uh, you think uh, I might be able to make some sort of uh, coherent response out of, feel free to put them down in the comment section. I will be reading those. Uh, and I look forward to seeing some. So thanks a lot. Uh, again, yeah. Uh, thanks everyone. Thanks one nights only one nights and uh, thank all of you for listening and uh, I will see you on the next one. So take care everybody Goodbye